Hello and welcome back to the Computer Lab. In this short video, I'm going to show you how to add the Ubiquita Unify APACLR dual radio long range access point onto your home network. So I recently installed a couple of these at a small business I was working at that wanted a better wireless. I'd never installed uh, Ubiquita or Unify products uh, at all before, um, but once I got it installed and the software running, I was really impressed. Uh, so I thought, well, I'll install these at my own uh, home, at my own property. Uh, and from there, I thought, well, I'll set the videos up and do a couple of videos and tutorials uh, for my channel whilst I'm setting up. A really good bit of kit. And if you're interested in doing that, please do carry on watching. Okay, so let's get started. I'm presuming you've already got it plugged in uh, and using the, uh, this device uses PoE, power over ethernet. So obviously plugged into either your PoE switch or using the uh, PoE injector that comes with the device. Okay, so now we need to uh, go to the website, the Ubiquitous website. So www.ui.com slash download slash unify. Once there, go into the software section. As you can see, I've just highlighted it with a the box there. I'm using it on a Mac, but you can download it on Windows. Uh, and there's lots of other different versions there, but I'm just using the Mac version. So once uh, you've got it downloaded, install it on to your chosen device, and then you can open the program. You can see there the Unify in the middle. I've got some other bits of programs on here because I have been playing around with it. Uh, but yeah, open the Unify controller. And this basically replaces the cloud key uh, that you can install on your network if you want to do. So yeah, and once the Unify controller is open, uh, then we need to launch into a browser. So you'll get the green tick to say it's working, and then we need to launch a browser to manage the network. I think mine complained about using Safari. I think it prefers Thunderbird and Google Chrome, and I'm using Google Chrome. So again, in here, if you've not used this product before, it will ask you to create an account. I've already created the account, so I'm just gonna log in. I'm just gonna blank the, obviously the, for obvious reasons, gonna blank the username and password out. Uh, and then log in to the uh, Unify controller device with the password that I've set up uh, previously. Like I say, if you're your first time with this, you'll have to set the account up first. Uh, use your details to log in. Uh, and then from there, we can get into the actual software side and looking at adding this uh, Unify access controller into the, um, uh, sorry, the access point into the Unify controller software uh, and the dashboard. So once we're loaded onto the dashboard, you will be then presented with this front screen. Uh, and you can see there there's no access points uh, shown. I'll just get rid of this so it's not confusing us. Uh, but yeah, you should see uh, on this dashboard, and you should have the same one if you haven't added anything yet, or you might have uh, stuff already in there. But where it says access points at the moment, even though I'm plugged in, powered on, and I'm connected physically with um, a cable, an Ethernet cable, onto the network, it's showing no access points. So I'll click on where it says access points, and then we should have the ones that we need to um, adopt onto our network. So click on where it says pending adoption. And then on the right hand side, we get the box that uh, breaks out and then we've got a button that says adopt. Uh, so this is now gonna adopt it onto our network. Uh, and if we was running this software all the time, it would stay in here. I mean, it stays in here anyway when you open the software, but if we adopt it onto the network, it then just logs it into this account uh, so that we can have um, access to this device and control it every time we open up the software uh, on your PC or Mac. Uh, so you get the light that says, or the status light that says provisioning. Uh, but yeah, this can take up to a minute to provision or longer, depending on how quick uh, your network and your computer is. Uh, so give it some time here. To, uh, don't expect it straight away uh, and just leave it, just let it get uh, provisioned on to your network. So yeah, we'll just wait for it to uh, provision. If I just zoom in again, and then you should see it connected. And there it is connected. Um, it's got a little exclamation mark, but that'll just disappear in a second. There it goes. Okay, so now at this point you think, okay, we're connected. I've uh, got it added onto my Unify controller. Um, so it should work, but there's a couple of other steps that we need to do. If I just show you on the dashboard, uh, now you can see that's changed to one access point. So if you've got several, you'll see several. You can see the wireless, um, different bands. They're all good. So everything's good. We've got one access point. Um, uh, and yeah, and if you go into devices, it's obviously all connected. Uh, but if you're trying to set this up now, you'll see that you can't see it on your devices. So anyway, bottom left-hand corner is where we need to go now in your Unify controller. So you have different things in here, alerts and stuff. But the one we want is settings right at the bottom. 
So we'll just click on to that and then we are presented with this uh, other menu. Uh, and uh, like I say, I'm on a learning curve myself with this, but um, so I'm not going to go into much detail with it. But click on wireless networks just under site and there's another button that says create new wireless network. Click on that one. And now we uh, need to name this, um, whatever you want to call your wireless um, SSID. So yeah, I'm just going to call mine um, uh, Whitecroft Unify. Um, so if I can just type this in correctly. Uh, and like I said, this is the name that's broadcast that you would normally see when walking around your property. Next thing, make sure it's enabled with a blue tick underneath where it says name. And then we've got security. Um, you've got open, so no password needed. You've got WP, uh, WEP, WPA Personal, or WPA Enterprise. I'm going to set mine as W. PA personal and then put in a password that you are comfortable with or that you use uh, once you've got the password in uh, you can apply the guest policies I'm not this is going to be my main actual wireless connection and then click save once we click save we should then see a rundown of what we've got it gives me a box saying that they were successfully applied so at this point now yes you've set up your wireless network but if we want to add a guest one say we need to click on uh, well, I'll show you some actually in this one first. We'll just go into the edit menu um, uh, and you can click on advanced options here, but you've also got the box that's uh, apply the guest policies uh, and you can tick and untick that. And if I click save, then that would apply that to this actual um, wireless setup uh, section. But I, I'm going to um, create a separate guest network. Uh, so all these different things in the advanced options, uh, we don't need to touch at this point. Um, some of them are more technical than others, um, but We'll just go back to where it says wireless networks. So we'll just cancel out of there. And what we'll do, we'll just create a, a guest network um, that sits on the back of this one. Uh, and then you can control the guest network. So this is people coming to your house or business uh, and giving them access to your network, but maybe locking it down or creating it, um, giving it separate VLANs or anything like that. Uh, and if you're used to setting up uh, networks, you'll know um, what the VLANs are and different, um, different ways to keep uh, guests out of your um, wireless uh, section, the personal sections. But anyway, yeah, so I'm creating this new one, create a new wireless network. I'm going to call it Whitecroft Unify Guest because it's just for this tutorial. Let's create this guest network. Again, I'm going to put a password on it. I don't want it open. I don't want anybody getting on it. Uh, so I need to put a password on it, a simple password. And then for this one, I'm going to apply guest policies. Uh, so if I tick that, and you can see by looking underneath, by default, guest policies will drop broadcast traffic from wireless stations and also block LAN 1 um, at uh, WLAN broadcast and multicast data from all except the default gateway. See advanced options for custom whitelisting. So in here you can uh, play around, but it, it basically what it's saying, it's applying some default uh, guest policies uh, that uh, Ubiquita or Unify see fit for guest wireless networks. So that's great. Uh, again, like I said, we can uh, tweak these uh, to suit our needs if you're familiar with the uh, using this type of thing. Uh, but yeah, I am creating a user group, so there's nothing in here uh, that I can do for that side of it. So we just need to go down to the bottom, click on save, and now we have two uh, wireless networks set up on our um, Unify AP ACLR long range access point. So that's great. So now you can go to your iPads, your iPhones, or whatever wireless laptops, or what wireless device you've got, and you should see the two networks that you have just set up. So that is it. That is how to set up a Ubiquita Unify AP ACLR dual radio long range access point on your home network. So I really hope you enjoyed the video. I really hope it was uh, helpful to you. Uh, and if it was, please do hit the subscribe button to subscribe to my channel. Please hit me up with any comments below. Also hit the bell icon to be alerted to any new videos that I produce. And thanks again for watching the Computer Lab on YouTube.